So Ashley and Rennell, so all you guys online in here, these guys are just really good. You can trust these guys. A lot of people are like, how do we, how do we find out where people understand the true gospel and, and uh, what God is really all about? And you can trust these guys. So just tell them, give them your stuff again, okay? Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, so our, our, our business is called Quantum U, and our website is uh, quantumu.co, and it's uh, quantum Y-O-U. And then if you have any questions, you can email me, ashley at quantumu.co, or you can also email hello at quantumu.co, and, and Rennell gets that email. Um, uh, real quick, so there's a couple wanting marriage restoration. And I just um, I pictured the, the past blowing away like smoke, and I just... Uh, I saw a vivid picture of you renewing your vows with, uh, with each other, with your grown kids there with you. And I just pictured a beautiful outdoor mountain area in the, in the beautiful fall weather and just felt and pictured perfect wholeness between you two and healing. The next is a couple wanting a baby, and your previous was a stillborn. And first, your first uh, born is safe in God's arms and is with you both. And I see that there's lots of in vitro treatments going on, and perhaps it's a little hard on your body, and you're wondering um, if you can stop. And yes, you can. It's okay to stop that. And I, I just pictured life coming to your womb, and I just pictured life coming out of your womb, and I saw um, a boy and a girl. <laughs> I think it's twins, and I think their names start with A. So I thought that was kind of cool. He's a good name to start your name with, so or a good letter to start your name with. <laughs> anyway, here's Raymond right. from where you're Santa Fe. Santa Fe. He introduced himself as a hippie from Santa Fe. Yeah, old hippie. <laughs> yeah. My only child has been married since December '09, and she was approaching her 10th anniversary, and she so dearly wanted to have a child. And in the first few years, I just said. God will give you a child. She goes, I don't think God loves me. You know, he, he, I've been praying. I've had people lay hands on me constantly. I says, he's going to come through for you. And she goes, oh, so you don't know what it's like because I have such a desire. Not being a woman, I can understand what she's saying. And she'd been through all the tests and all the, what she could do as much as she could. And it's been, like I said, approaching a 10-year anniversary. And she's looking at in, in, what's it called, in vitro? Yeah. And she said, Dad, it's tens of thousands of dollars. I says, yeah. Can you write us a check? Yeah, I believe I can help you there if you need it. She said, oh. He said, it's painful, and it, it, there's no guarantees. So you know, September two years ago, someone introduced you to Mike. And he said, you can listen to this guy. I says, okay, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll listen for a few weeks. And then uh, October, we met our daughter in Seattle. And um, so we went down to the Pikes Market. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's a big fish market. It's a big tourist thing. And uh, we stopped at a Target. And they're Seahawks fans. Sorry for you Bronco fans out here, but they love the Seahawks anyway. So they had onesies. And, uh, you know, like six months. So I bought them. I said, this is for your baby. She goes, I'm not pregnant. I said, I don't care. I said, I want you to take it home. And uh, so we got in the Uber cab, and my wife and daughter were sitting in the back seat, and I talked to the Uber lady. She's from Africa. You know, she had broken English, but she understood. <clears throat> I said, that's my daughter and wife. I'm going to be a grandpa. Then my daughter's going to give me a grandbaby. Oh, she was so excited. You know, she's from Nigeria or something. She almost went off the road. Well, when I got out of that cab, my daughter was mad. Whoa, she was fuming. I never seen that side of her. She goes, Dad, this is very personal, and I'm not pregnant. Why are you telling people this? I said, I see it. I know it. it your baby is yours. Even though you're not pregnant at this moment, I see you having this baby. And I said, you hang up those clothes in your bedroom, and every time you walk by them, imagine your child wearing those clothes, little head, little feet, little hands sticking out, and send me that picture, because I want to put it in my kitchen, which I did. And every time I walk by, I thank God for that little baby, my first grandchild. And this was, you know, probably, what, mid-October? And then, <laughs> Thanksgiving week, right? 
we talk a lot on the phone. She goes, Dad, I'm sick. I says, could it be morning sick? No, Dad, no. People are sick at work. Ah, it's not morning sick. No, sorry, whatever. So on Thanksgiving morning, she wakes up, and her husband said, do that strip test, would you already? So she listened to him, not me, you know. So she took it, and she screamed. She said, Marcel, you better get down over there at Walgreens to get one of those digital ones. I don't think this is working. So he went to Walgreens. Sure, now she was pregnant. And uh, yeah, now she's like a year and three months. What joy. And uh, what, what, she did, what they told her was she has unexplained infertility. And that's one of the toughest because there's no way to treat it. There's no way to fix it. It's unexplained. So, so God came through big time, and now she's learning about, I keep telling her, start seeing things and meditate in your new home. See yourself going room to room. And, you know, yeah, there's no impossibility. So if anybody out there is having issues with infertility, just see that baby and it'll, it'll come to pass. It works. Nice. I love it. So nine months or nine years trying to get pregnant. Almost, yeah, just under 10 years being married. Yeah. And then one year. What's that? Or one month. Yeah, one month. She's pregnant. I know. I How's that, it. huh? God's Isn't that good? good? Isn't that fitting for what we're talking about? I love it. Thanks, bud. And it's for anything, guys. God's in you. So, um, you know, Beth was talking about uh, uh, the picture of the maroon bells in Aspen, and, and we, we scooted up to the mountains this week just because I love it. <laughs> and um, the mountains were just amazing. If we show that, is that just a picture? Or is that a picture? So that was, I think, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Monday in, in Aspen. Uh, Angelique took that picture. And then um, if you go to the next slide, so we, Angelique and I were up early. Nobody else was up. And so we went to Starbucks and got a coffee. And like that first picture is just, if you know where Wagner Park is, it's right to the right of that. And that's the Mountain Chalet. And you can see the, the ski resort right there. And this was the drive all the way up. We took the back way and just beautiful. And, and when we were grabbing a coffee that morning, I was like, look at the glory of this place. This place is absolutely amazing. And that scripture just came up. And I, I've, I've taught it before, but I think, we, again, when we look at it from the Hebrew perspective, it's absolutely amazing what, what Beth shared that um, I would say most Christians, uh, even possibly even some of you, um, still have this view of God somewhere else where when it's so clear where it says he's one with us and the same glory we have, he's given to us. So we didn't get a junior varsity glory, guys. We didn't get a lesser glory. He gave us his glory. So the same creator, the, the God who created everything that is, these beautiful places, and every place has their own beauty at wherever you live, whether it's the ocean or, you know, I remember times like, uh, um, growing up in Iowa and just going out like first time, I think when, when, uh, my brother-in-law taught me how to hunt and fish and just going out with the dogs that time and going through the fields and you're just like, wow, this place is stunning. It's like, some people are like, Iowa's stunning. I go, yeah, parts of it. <laughs> so, uh, there's just beauty everywhere. And you go, wow, the same God that created all of this and holds it together. He's given that creative ability and his glory to me. Isn't that crazy? That's where you should never this whole thing where he's given us life and life more abundantly, I would just ask that you just don't accept lack anymore. Don't accept any suggestion of lack. And we're kind of, kind of che trying to teach you just like that is like, Hey, you know, Raymond and Priscilla's daughter, she desires a baby. She wants to, she wants to have this child. And it took this simple thing. They buy them a, a Seahawks onesie and both Monique, their daughter, and, and uh, Raymond and Priscilla, in their imagination, see that daughter. Is it Monique? Did I say it right? Yeah, yeah okay. Um, I was trying to remember. Um, they see that baby in that ugly Seahawks jersey. <laughs> but just feeling it. And oh, you moms know you can smell babies. Can't You can just smell it. You smell their hair. And you that, guys, then you completely trust Christ in you to bring it. I think most people are still trying to do it. Um, am I doing it right? Guys, faith is actually quite simple. Faith is going, 
I can lay hold of anything because I already own everything. He's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. You don't need to work it up. You don't need to tongue it to death. You don't need to do it right or wrong. In fact, you really can't screw it up if you just rest yourself a little bit, see that that baby, feel what you would be feeling if you had that baby in your arms, and then completely trust Christ in you to bring it to pass. That's it. It's not easy to receive anything. That's what we're trying to get people to do. And you know, all the faith verses we learned are all real. They just made you go do it. And faith is faith is this simple. Trusting what we can't see. When all the facts, all the, the reasons, oh, for nine years I can't get pregnant. Gosh, the doctors say this, the doctors say that. I don't have enough money to buy this house. or well, I don't really care what it is. This whole thing, guys, is temporary. It says it's, it's changeable, it's movable. Just as the same glory that creates these pictures, that's what's in you. And you can simply, we have this unique ability as being created in the image of God that we can simply choose to see what we want to experience in life. And what we behold or focus on within, now let it be. Just trust that. I don't care what it looks like, what the facts are. Faith is simply going, I trust that that's real and it's going to come to pass in my life. That's not a lot of effort, is it? That sounds very graceful to me. And that's really true. That's, so we're going to get through a little bit of the Hebrew, but I think if you would just slow yourself down, like for me, I was going, this place is absolutely beautiful. And then I was just looking today, A Basin's supposed to open up on October 24th. They go, in a month, this place will be covered with two feet of snow, which I love too, but isn't that beautiful? So let's go through these verses. If we go to this next slide, and I was going to talk about Barabbas and Jesus again. I might do that later. Boy, I stirred some things up with that. Oh, gosh, I wish people would read their book, though. I don't know about you, but my book says this. It says, if you read it as the letter, what does it do to you? You're, all you're going to see is death in it. It kills you, right? And it's not written on ink or stone. Because the Spirit is written on your heart. All of those verses, all of those stories are really something, I'm not talking about whether it's literal or not to you. It's irrelevant. The only way to get something out of Scripture is to read it spiritually. Because the carnal man receiveth not the things of God. Your flesh man, your intellect, your knowledge... Logic does not make sense. The Spirit can receive anything at any time. There's no limits. It says, and there's two ways to look at life. You can either look at life as the firstborn, which is our flesh, which being judged, ruled and judged by our senses. But the whole journey, guys, to, to present, here's Apostle Paul, presents everybody full of Christ, perfected in Christ, to the complete hilt where you're overflowing of the anointing. Literally, what it is, when you really learn how to operate out of the Spirit, is to present every man that you have this this legitimate power of God, the glory of God within you, and you can bring any physical situation into subjection. You can bring it like, I don't want to live that anymore. I die to that old man. I give up Barabbas. If you, if you accept any suggestion of, I don't have this, or um, I can't have this, or the economy's doing this to me, or these people are accusing me of this, guys, you're letting Barabbas steal from you. Meaning, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. So to deny that we have, if we have lack, we're denying salvation. We're literally denying Jesus Christ. Does that make sense to you guys? So what that whole thing is talking about spiritually is the most beautiful thing if you ever get it. That's where people are like, so you saying it's not real? I'm going, I'm saying the spiritual interpretation is more beautiful and always brings life if you understand scripture. Every scripture, guys, is, is you can have the letter of it, what's going on physically or not, using real physical events, real stories, real landmarks in history, different things like that. But the writers wrote it to give you a spiritual interpretation that brings life every time. So to read that spiritually to me is anything that says, that's saying I have lack, release Barabbas. Turn the flesh away and bind or crucify yourself to what will save you. That's really what that whole story is about. It's about the kingdom, Right? And the kingdom, he says, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. And you've heard me talk about this a million times. I still think like that one time all of a sudden you'll get it. Like this is a monarchy, guys, and he gave you the kingship. Isn't that crazy? He gave you the kingship. He goes, I've given you my royal rule and reign. And he says, now here are the keys. Here's how it works. Whatever you see yourself bound to, which was crucified to them. Crucify meant in covenant bound to. 
Does that make sense? He says, so whatever you want to be bound to, Monique wanted to be bound to a baby. Raymond and Priscilla wanted a little grandbaby. So they see themselves as attached to that and bound to that. And they loosed Barabbas, any, the thief, anything stealing from them. I have no concept of that anymore. My daughter is going to have a baby and we're, grand, we're grandparents. They bound themselves to what saves them. That's what that story is about bonding and loosing. You guys get it? Okay. Now all you haters, it's fine. Just... I'm not going to talk about it again, even though I just talked about it, because I was going to, but this was, Aspen was like calling me when I'm going, oh my God, this glory. Because I want people to understand what glory is, because we, we throw around a lot of Christian words flippantly, right? Oh, to God be the glory. Don't we? Do you have any idea what that means? I don't think you do. I'm going to share with you tonight. Oh, to God be the glory. Where's God? So this glory is somewhere in you, right? Isn't that wild? When, when I re- look at it in Hebrew, this will be crazy. So, John 17, 21, that they all may be, how many? One. You know, people are like, God, you're like, you're destroying all my sacred cows. Yes, they all need to be slaughtered. We need to have a big. Oh, yeah. What'd you say, Ash? Would you... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's have a big burger fry, right? Yeah. So that they all may be one. How many is one to you guys? So, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. That's a whole nother talk. I'll, I'll, I'll unpack that verse right there. Not tonight. There's too much going on here, but it's all good. And the glory which you gave me. See, most Christians would go, God gave all of his glory to Jesus. And then somehow they miss this verse. Right? The glory which you gave me, I have given them. Meaning you have it. You have, think about that. That's what was hitting me that morning. I was going, wow, the creator that created this, this, this beautiful seasons and cycles and, and these beautiful leaves and mountains and wonderful stores and restaurants. He loves to see creation, like enjoy life, guys. That's, it's for us to live and live more abundantly. And I'm going, that creative ability lives in me and it lives in you. Are there any limits once you start looking at creation going, that's the glory I carry. It shouldn't be. So, the glory which you give me, I've given them, that they may be how many? One. Just as we are all one. I and them and you and me. That they may be perfect in, and that perfect is, is like this concept of um, presents every man complete, like fully complete in Christ, the anointing. So he says, that's what he's telling them, that you may be completely complete in the anointing of God and one with God. Is that a mind bender or what? Oh, that's the title. I forgot to tell you. And it's literal. What you do in the holy place literally binds, bends and shapes reality. So um, we have been given God's glory. The same glory of all creation is one with us and has been given to us. So here's, I want to show you these, these, I'll just summarize Lord because I've done it enough with you, but I really want to dig into glory again because it's really amazing. But if you look at glory and Lord, the Hebrews said it backwards so that they would say, yud heh vav heh, Yahweh kavot. Yahweh Kavot was, was glory. And we say the glory of God. But if you take those two words, guys, quantum physicists, it describes quantum physics perfectly, doesn't it? Like all they're going, we have this unique ability that when we observe something, the simple act of human beings expecting something to be there makes it show up. Now, how hard is that? People are like, this grace thing's hard. I'm like, can you look at something? You can behold, behold means to see the, the biggest thing, the, the topmost thing. If you can simply see something, guys, it is coming into your physical realm. That's, that's quantum. That's, I'll show you that's exactly what glory and Lord means. Now, isn't that amazing? Now, when you go to God be the glory, you can get really excited about it because all of you can do this. It's really not hard. What you're trying to do is you're trying to manifest it or you're trying to, maybe I'm not doing it right. Listen, what you see, here's everybody, most people have this thing backwards. It says, believe you have received it, which is aorist tense. So believe I already have it. Here's the easiest way to believe you already have it. He's given you everything that pertains to life and God in this. There's nothing he didn't give you. So if you've got everything, then is it easier to believe you have it? It should be. That's what I'm trying to get these scriptures into you. Like, 
He's given me everything that pertains to life in blood. People are playing for blessings, right? They're at the dinner table. Lord, bless and all these stoic, weird prayers that we all grew up with. Like I kind of look at them now and go, what a, what a waste of time that is. So it's too late. He goes, I've blessed you with every blessing that God has in the spirit. Anything that he has. What he's saying is the second man, Christ in you, the hope of glory is where all the blessings are. And really it's just learning to go, what I do in the unseen becomes seen. The whole Romans Abraham verse, right? What I do in the unseen becomes seen. So if I don't like myself here, I'm like Pontius Pilate. I'm the judge. I'm judging between two realities. I'm judging between the physical man that's stealing from me because it looks like things are not happening. Looks like I don't have enough money. Looks like the economy's this. Looks like that guy. All of that, if you put anything outside of yourself, guys, you're going to get stolen from. Does that make sense? That, and that's where I was kind of like, gosh, guys, come on. Like, I got friends like stealing, stealing angels from Africa and stuff. Like, what are you guys talking about? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> no, that's impossible. He's given you everything. You, you're walking as Barabbas in that story. Does that make sense? You're going, unless this thing, we got to take back this and kind of take back this. Guys, you are, you are denying Jesus Christ when you do that stuff. I know it, you've been taught this is what Christianity is. You're actually denying your salvation. You're saying, because something outside of me is causing this, my country is going to collapse. I'm going to collapse. My business is going to collapse. Stop that, guys. That's Barabbas. You're walking as Barabbas. Release all that nonsense. I see my business as totally thriving, prospering. Isn't it amazing that everything works perfectly for my business? Yeah, but the economy, no, everything works perfectly for my business. Now you're walking as Jesus Christ. You're binding yourself to what saves you. And you're ignoring all this chatter out here. Does that help you guys? Okay, so let's, let's get into the words because it's really, it's really fascinating to me. So if you look up glory, if, if this is just, I, I'm just screenshotting this. You can't say I make this stuff up. So it'll be 1391. The Greek is doxa. Hence, praise, honor, glory. I always go to the Hebrew, guys. I, I always find out what does this word mean in the Septuagint or the Hebrew because then you'll find the real deal. But anyway, the, you know, the, the Greek and English translation is not bad. Honor, renown, glory, especially divine quality. I found uh, this was very interesting to me. The unspoken manifestation of God or the Shekinah glory. The unspoken manifestation of God. If it's unspoken, it's happening in the, se the secret place, right? You guys get it? So go, what you do in the secret place becomes. That's, this is glory. But then, then you, this is all in the same screenshot of Bible Hub. So doxa from dokeo, exercise in personal opinion, which earns glory. And then it says, corresponds to the Old Testament word kavot. Old Testament 3519, to be heavy. Now, I think you'll understand it probably like this. So you ever heard these kind of terms when, when uh, um, like if somebody very prominent came in or... I don't know, like when we were at the Air Force Academy, when like Secretary of State or somebody come in, we would go, wow, that guy, that guy carries a lot of weight or that woman carries a lot of weight. We understand that, right? Meaning that, whoa, they're heavy. Like they, they, they carry a lot of weight. What they say means a lot to me. Now, how much more heavy could you get than God's heaviness, his glory? Because I've given you my glory. So when you, work, when you walk into a room, you're the most important person there because you're carrying his glory. Does that make sense? I mean, we've all been there. Like, like some of the important comes in like, whoa, you know, so-and-so is here. We should do that every morning when we wake up and go, whoa, I'm looking at the fullness of God in a body called me. There's nobody heavier than me right now. Does that, does that make sense? When you start to realize the glory you carry, it's God. <laughs> Who can stop God from anything? No one, right? That's the glory. That's the heaviness. It's, whoa, that's the, I didn't want to use political figures, but if, imagine it was a president you liked. Some of you guys don't like this president. I've, I've been through every president. They're all the Antichrist, depending on which side you're on. And it's just ridiculous to me. But if, if, if somebody of that stature came in to go, whoa, the president's here. You guys know what I'm trying to say, right? Guys, I don't care what the president even says. You should walk in and go, wow, the glory of God is here. And because I'm, I showed up. Follow me? I'm here. Don't, put, don't give the kingdom keys to anybody but you. Meaning, I determine what's going on here. So that's, that's glory. It corresponds to the Old Testament word kavot. Now, this glory in Hebrew, that, that kavot, I, I want to show this again, this next slide, because I want you to get this, guys. 
Holy smokes, this is so good again. So it reads right to left. It's kaf, bet, <clears throat> vav, delet. And so doxa in Greek used for the Hebrew word kavot, strong, 35.15 or 35.19, to be heavy, glorious, honor, riches, abundance. If we just take it in Greek, it's good. If we just, right? So he goes, I've given you my glory. So here's what he's saying. I've given you my weightiness. When you walk into a room, you're the most important thing. You call the shots. I don't care what's going on in the physical world. He's given you his glory. He's given you his honor. He's given you his riches. And he's given you his abundance. If we just read it like that, that's pretty good. You could stop there, right? But the Hebrew tells a story. It is so good. Now, this is what's so crazy. That first letter is like a cough. And it's actually the shape of a palm. Now, remember, remember I shared a while back where the Old Testament, the script, well, it doesn't even say that, man. The more I'm reading it, it doesn't, we've been taught that when it says the law, but if you go look at it, guys, it says the scriptures. It gives you all the first five books and then this, and then, well, the only one's written. It literally says the scriptures because then the New Testament makes sense too. So I want you to think about actually what it says. The scriptures are not the realities themselves, but types and shadows of good things to come. Meaning all of those stories are stories that happen in the minds of you and I, the holy place where we meet God face to face. Everybody with me so far? All right. Not written in ink, not written on stone. It's written on your heart. All these things are going to happen within you. Once you get that, oh my gosh. But in Isaiah, so this is something about you. And it says, the Lord, our father, the potter. Remember that? So he equates the Lord, yud heh vav he. He equates the Father and includes the potter. And if you click on it, it says your imagination, these two divine creatures within you where you meet face to face with God and bends and shapes physical material. As a potter shapes the clay. So you get this idea of cough is the, uh, is the cup of a hand. So think about a potter at his potter's wheel. And it says, if you don't like the, the, the shape and the mold of the clay, if you don't like something going on in your life, it's as simple as remold the clay. That's what it was all about. It's like, I can bend and shape. So they're using the image of a potter where you guys can all see that, right? He's got his, his spinning wheel going and you guys have seen that where it, all of a sudden they're doing this and it starts to come up and then they don't like it and they just start over. He's saying, if you don't like anything about your life, these Old Testament stories, you go, just reshape it with the cough within you. Just shape the clay. Reshape your life. That's all he's talking about. That's crazy when you think about it. But cough, I'm going to read it again because this is so good to me. So this is out of HebrewForChristians.com. Cough. The two letters of the word cough are the, are the letters of the two Hebrew words, koach, potential, and puel, actual. The cough, which is glory, which you have, he is God's glory. It enables the hidden power of the spiritual, any potential, to be made actual in the physical. Doesn't that sound exactly like quantum? Here's quantum. We don't know about all this Bible stuff, but here's what we do know. We're not trying to heal this person. We simply, all possibilities exist at the same time in quantum. I go, wow, sounds like spirit. Sounds like he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Any possibility. We simply choose a different possibility and feel the gratitude as if it's real, and it becomes. I'm going, sounds like glory to me. Sounds like cough, doesn't it? Let me read it again. Cough, it's the shape of your hand. You can mold and bend and shape clay, anything earthy, anything physical. It enables the hidden power of the spiritual, the potential, any potential exists, and make it actual into the physical. Isn't that different than to God be the glory? Some religious sounding nonsense, right? This is you. He goes, this is your ability. That is awesome to me. Bet is you inside the tabernacle or you're the house. Where's the tabernacle of God? Where does God dwell? You, right? It says, know ye not that you are the temple and the spirit dwells in you. You're the dwelling place, guys. You're the, you're the skin tent that the Old Testament talked about. We're like, wow, it was crazy because everywhere we went, the Shekinah glory followed us. Yeah, because it's talking about you. <laughs> And it says, those are not literal stories. The real story is you. I'm just reading your book. Gosh, this, the Christian community is coming and glued with me right now. I'm going, I'm, does, did it say that? Did it say we were one and it came in glory? It sounds like I just like, committed murder or something. I'm going, yeah, that's blasphemy. Like, it's your book. It's like, it's your book. 
Have you read it? Yeah, but you can't take it literal. Oh, man, I'm going to kick you right in the rear end right now. That kind of nonsense is stealing from people, which is why I get so animated about it. I'm like, it says we're one. And it says the same glory he has, we have. And then when we told him what it really is, holy smokes, we could set their whole life free if they would actually take this seriously, right? Because here's what it says. It's just fascinating. I got my little cheat sheet here. I got some notes in it. But uh, to carry a lot of weight, the weight of God, when you walk in, the most important person is there because God follows you wherever you go because you're one with him. And that cough is the palm or the hidden power of the spirit to bring any potential into the physical. You can take any possibility. Doesn't that, haven't we heard verse, verses like that that says this? All things are possible to him who does what? Believes or persuaded. So if you're going to do anything, persuade yourself that you've been given everything effortlessly. You got to persuade yourself. And you can't do it by looking at the physical and wondering, is it working? Or how come this isn't working for me? Guys, faith is this. Faith is, I trust that Christ within me, that being within me that Raymond was talking about, to do it with no effort of my own. Father, you says, if I lay hold of anything I desire as if I already own it, that's Lombano, right? I have this. From this day forward, I am. You get to fill in the blank. Isn't that crazy? So from this day forward, I'm prosperous. From this day forward, I'm living in the house of my dreams. From this year for, day forward, my business that I've always wanted is prospering like nobody's business. That's I am. That's God. That's you, Dave, Avhe. Isn't that wild? Well, I forgot to call it Lord. Jeez, this is such an amazing. Lord is very similar to glory. Yud or Yod is the strength of the hand of God. I mean, Hava, He, Vav, He. It's, it, it's literally this. It literally describes the observer effect to a T. We can simply observe something, and if we expect it to be there, which that's all persuasion is, that's all faith is, oh, I expect this. What I'm trying to show you is as simple as this. If we observe something within, not with our physical eyes, it binds or vobs us to what we just observed. It's the observer effect. To a T. And kavod is really similar. <laughs> so kavod is this. <clears throat> the glory of God is... I can, I, the spirit within me can take anything and bring it into physical because all things are, are right now within me, the house, and Vav is a man or the nail or connects you to the Dilet is a door of the path of life. So here's what he's really, how simply he's saying this. The glory of the Lord is the strength of God. I can simply, if I don't like what's going on in my life, I can detach myself from what's going on and I go within where God himself dwells. So it's not Mike trying to do this, it's not Barb, it's not Ashley, it's not us trying to do it. It's the Lord from heaven is what it says. The second man, the spiritual man, is the Lord from heaven and he's dwelling in you. And the whole idea of spiritual growth, if, if, if we're to do anything in ministry, in my opinion, is to present everybody complete in the anointing going, you got everything. You're good. Everything's good about you. There's nothing to learn. It's really just operating in it. Be. I am. So... The strength of God that's in you is I can behold something with expectation. I believe it's going to be there and it'll become. It binds me to what I just beheld. That hay is an open window, which means to behold something, to look at something, observe it. And the glory is that glory within me, that, that power of the yod, yod hey, vav hey within me literally takes anything what I just did in there, the glory of the Lord within man, the house of man, and that'll become my path. How great is that? So when we were talking about this, I'm going, oh my God, the glory of the Lord. So that's why I was, it was just stunning to me when I'm looking at these mountains and the aspens and just going, oh man, if we could just get our head around, what, I, what, you know, if you like to, I don't care what you like, if you like the ocean, if you like the astronomy, if you, oh, I can't say that, it's the devil. So maybe not that one, but um, <laughs> you go, numbers. He happened to write a book on it. <laughs> Can't look at numbers, numerology. Like, well, there's a book about it. So uh, anyway, oh, oh, oh. so come on, like, get relaxed, right? There's nothing to be afraid of. Like, that's of the, no, that's of you. Have you not read? There's one spirit. Now, what we do with that spirit, it's malleable. We can be, we can do good things. We can do bad things. But he's given us the keys to the kingdom. So we, there's nothing evil outside of yourself that you have to fight. Nothing, Right? There's one spirit, and what you do with that spirit is submissive to you. That's, that's the crazy part. So anyway, 
The glory or kavod of Christ is the hidden power of the Spirit within us, the bet, the house, to take any potential and bring it into physical reality as our path. Here's how divine we are. Oh, man. I got to do, I got to do a service on auto sometime. Self. Guys, it'll shock you. Where we've, we've placed these, these things in there where, like in 1 John, I shared this on the fellowship one night where it says, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And since we know he hears us, we have what we've asked of him. You know what him is there? Any guesses? It says auto, self, auto. We all know what an autobiography is, right? I wrote it. You want to read that? Here's what it says. This is the confidence I have in myself. Now, if you give yourself self-talk, do you hear yourself talk? Now this next verse really makes sense. This is the confidence I have in myself because I'm one with the Father in the same glory He given me. This is the confidence I have in myself. If I ask anything according to His will, I hear it. And since I hear it, I know I have it. She jumped out of her chair. I said, you know what it says there when it says this is the confidence that we have in him? She, and that we we're kind of doing all that. I said, it says self, auto. She goes, it does. Now we started going through different verses like this morning too. I was like, oh man, I bet this verse says when we put him in there, sure enough, it says auto. Go do a, go do a concordance search on auto, guys. He's talking about you. He's talking about the glory of his highest creation, which is you, where he tabernacles. This is the confidence that you can have in yourself. Holy smokes, that's way better than you rotten little sinner, right? You got to say these magic words and then he'll jump in, but you might backfall and then he'll jump out. <laughs> Please turn that nonsense off. It's just utter nonsense. So this is the glory that you have. Fair enough? No, I just want to show this slide because if, that, if, if the word glory doesn't show this, this next slide by Joe Dispenza, I don't know what does. So people believe we have to drag our body through space and time to get what we want. That is the law of separation. Matter trying to change matter. Matter trying to change matter works, but it takes a long time, right? Nine years in vitro, one month pregnant. What's better to you guys? I'll take the one month, right? Same thing with your businesses, guys. Same thing with your marriage. Same thing with your relationships. Please take your eyes off what's stealing from you. Your physical senses will lie to you. They'll say, I have lack. I don't have this. And he's saying, release Barabbas and attach yourself, crucify yourself, bind yourself to what will save you. And don't let it go. I don't care what's going on out here. So the lie of separation matter trying to change matter. The truth is everything that is matter is surrounded by a quantum field of love. God, this is like great theology, right? You can learn to create from the field instead of matter. That's exactly what they did. So exactly what Ashley's doing when you, when you, in the prayer team, when you go, we do this, don't we? I see, I see this couple and, you know, this is going on and it just blows away. I, I forget the terminology you use. It's like just kind of blew away like smoke or something, right? It's kind of what you said. She imaged that. That's the glory of God. That's exactly what's going to happen in that couple. Now, how hard was that? You did not need a 12 month discipleship class to learn about God. <laughs> it's really trying to learn about you. He's trying to, he's like, present you as the complete in Christ. It's really about you. Amen? Anyway, so you can learn to create from the field instead of matter. When you get a picture of what you desire in your mind and maintain the motion as if you already have it, the greatest is gratitude, guys. Thank you, Father, I already have this. Thank you, Father. It feels so good to be wealthy. It feels so good to be whole. It feels so amazing to be in love with my wife. It feels so amazing that all my relationships work. It, feel, my, it feels so great that my business is prospering like nobody's business. Then all this chatter starts to go away. It really does. You kind of walk around in this blissful little thing, right? Anyway, independent of any situation, fact or time, you're like a transducer. You collapse space and time. This is exactly right. In fact, if you go, we were looking at this verse this morning where it says, we were created in his image. You guys have all heard this in Genesis, right? We were created in his image. And if you look at it, it says, he beheld in the unseen and we became in the scene. Awesome. And then it says this, he made us male and female. Man, there's auto and I all over in there. If you go look it up, auto and I. Here's what it's really saying. He's saying, this is how I made you in the image of me, in the image and likeness of me. I imaged you 
in the spirit realm and you became in the physical realm. And I've made you male and female is what it says. Meaning you can choose any desire as the desires of the father. It's literally Latin for I'm the father, I'm the progenitor. I planted the seed of this. And the spirit within me is the woman, the submissive part of me. It submits and brings me anything I want. I've made you male and female. Just as God created us, he imaged us and we became. He goes, I've created you the same way. You can choose any desire. See it as if it's real in the, the Christ in you, the, spirit, the woman within you. The female submissiveness of the spirit brings it to pass for you so you can create. So that is, a, that is one wild verse when you get into it and you start actually analyzing what it says. Anyway, people are like, he made them naked and they're running around and then a snake was talking to them. And then, When's the last time you and your wife were in the garden naked? Well, may, I shouldn't ask that maybe. You got my ring cam my ring doorbell camera is gonna catch you. <laughs> so <laughs> but come on guys, really like these are real stories. I I a snake's never talked to me, especially not when my wife and I are running around naked. And then she was dumb enough to believe the snake. That's where we all fell. It's like ridiculous to me now. I'm going, how could I have been? right? It's real. <laughs> but then the verse says, these are not literal stories. This is something good that happens in you, but enough of that. I'll get all worked up again. I'm like, Mike, are you saying it's not literal? Kind of, because that's never happened to me, right? And I really don't think a naked roll rat jumped on a boat. I don't. And then when you actually, people are sending me stuff now as they're digging into the Hebrews, like, it's about creation. They go, hello. It says, once you believe you're complete in Christ, eight people get off the ark and it says, now go progenerate and multiply the earth. It's about intimacy. Two and two come together, they produce, right? But it is funny, the far side commercial with the dinosaurs there. I'll show that next week, maybe there. So here's these dinosaurs, they see the Noah's ark out in the distance. They go, oh crap, was that today? <laughs> it's classic. So they know how to make fun of it. Anyway, so, but this is serious stuff. So when you get the picture of what you desire, that is yude vave. I'm beholding, I'm visioning something in the, in the spirit realm, in the invisible realm. And the Christ in me brings it to pass with no effort of my own. That is Lord in glory and kavot. That's so awesome when you get it. Independent of any situation, fact, or time. Here's where people, like, they struggle. I did it again last night and it didn't show up today. Wait a minute. <laughs> it says, why are you spending your time looking for it here? It says the kingdom does not come with anything observable. Here's what it does say. Trust what you do within and it'll become in the physical. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn. But it will show up. You will harvest whatever you just did. Relax with this thing. He'll always be on time. Because people are like, oh man, I'm running out of money. Uh, no, you're, you already have it. He'll, it'll be okay. It'll be perfect in time. I've seen it over and over and over again where like this thing was supposed to be due and they're just going, you know what? I know it's real. I know I have this. And all of a sudden that date comes and goes and miraculously didn't need to happen then. I've just seen it over and over. Don't relax or don't, don't freak out. What you just did within is more real and bends and shapes into the physical that you need. It's just probably different than what you suspected it was going to be. But it will harvest. Everybody okay with that? I love this, man. The event is trying to you. You do not have to go anywhere to get any desire you could ever have. That is awesome to me. That's glory. That's kavot. The cough in me is the hidden power within me to bring any potential into the physical. That is the glory he's given you. Fair enough? All right. Does anybody need prayer? Sometimes it's easier just to do it for you. I think the reason I do this over and over and over, guys, because the number one thing that you, you, you need to really just master. It, it's really like a, you can master it. It's, it's really not... I don't even want to use that word because it sounds like it's, oh, I got to spend hours doing this. It's, it, let me just read this. Maybe this is enough to. Barabbas was leaving any desire unfulfilled. He says, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. I came to give you life and life how, how much? Glorious and life more abundant, right? So to deny yourself of anything is denying salvation. It's denying Jesus Christ within you. It's, it's, it's accepting any suggestion of lack. And that'll steal from you. Don't anymore. Once you realize it's this easy, you can graciously accept any desire right now as real. The holiest of holies where we meet God is what you do right up here. Right you do within. Right? That's where God meets you face to face. Those two parts of your cerebrum, those cherubs. Even though your physical senses and facts seem to deny its reality. Take your eyes off that, guys. 
Faith is simply this. I have this from this day forward. And I'm going to take my eyes off all this stuff because I know I already have it within. And I know that my simple act of beholding it, seeing any desires as if it's already real, binds me to what's already real and it shows up in my life. I think, I think where this last paragraph is really where most people, this is not up to you. I think a lot of people feel like it's their responsibility to do it right or manifest it. I'm sure you're like, I'm trying to manifest this thing. You can't. It's the being within you. It's Christ within you who's doing it. The best thing to do is go to sleep because then you can't really fight it, right? That's why we love when we pray. We love, to, we love them to not know we're praying because <laughs> we can talk spirit to spirit. We can, we can look at it just like if I just saw you, Patty, so come use you. I'm not like, I used to get nervous when the pastor would point me out when I was a kid. I'm like, God, did he see that? How does he know everything about me? He was a little kid. I was always in trouble. And like Reverend Ryan Brandt start pointing his little, his like gnarly little finger. I was sitting there as a little kid going, damn, this guy knows everything about me. I hate coming to church. <laughs> I feel guilty all the time, right? But if, so let's say I was, I, was talk, I was praying for Patty. And she's like, Mike, would the, would the prayer team pray for this? All we do, guys, is we use our imagination to choose any possibility. And we go, I'm just going to make up what most people pray about. So she's like, I want, would you help us see, see ourselves prospering and doing X? So all we really do, guys, is we go within, like, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that, that Roy and Patty are prospering more than anybody. Everything's working in their life. It feels so good. I can feel their joy. I can feel them. Guys, this is working. We're just talking in the spirit as if we're talking straight to them. Thank you, Father. And then, guys, this is literally all we do. We trust that what we just beheld, we don't take any responsibility to try to do it right, to have enough faith. We've, we completely roll that over to Christ in me. Because faith is simply going, I trust. It says, even when we read it in English, it says, ask and you shall receive so your joy may be full. Whatever you ask for. It's a bad translation, but it really means to grab anything that's already yours. But let's just take it in English, the bad translation. Hey, Lord, can I have it? Yep. If you ask for it, you have it so that your joy may be full. Oh, thank you, Father, I have it because I asked for it. It's really easy, actually, even in English, even though it's wrong. I asked for it, then I have it. Oh, how can you not get happy about that? I can ask for anything. Thank you, Father, I have it. Then this completely letting Christ in me bring it to pass with no effort of my own, not my responsibility, just the joy of gratitude of receivership. Thank you, Father, you're so good. Amen, amen, amen. And I don't care what's going on, guys. Just trust that what you did is real and it'll show up in your life. Is that cool? That's the glory of God. I can take any potential. I can choose any desire. So don't let any unfulfilled goal, any unfulfilled dream, simply see yourself already and enjoying it right now with gratitude. Thank you, Father. And completely throw that onto him and go, thank you, I have it. And with expectancy, just look for it. Start to look for little things like, oh man, that showed up. And how cool is this? And it does start showing up, doesn't it? So does that help you guys? All right. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. He gives us the desires of our heart, guys. If there's any desire, I don't care how crazy it is. Don't try to figure it out. That's not up to you. He has ways and means we know not how. The things of the, the carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit because we look at the limitations. But the spirit can receive anything right now. There's no time or space. We can make then, now, and over there, here. We can become right immersed into our desire and then just trust him to bring exactly what we did with them to pass with no effort of our own. That's faith, guys. That's the kingdom. That's binding and loosing. That's glory of the Lord that's within you. And it's just really learning how to operate in this freely, joyously for yourself and others. So, Father, we just thank you from this day forward. I am, and you guys get to fill in the blank. Thank you, Father. I am prosperous, and it just flows to me freely. Thank you, Father, that my business is rocking. Everything's working. It's defying all the odds. Thank you, Father, that my relationships are beautiful. They're wonderful. They're loving. They're compassionate. Thank you, Father, that all of this is mine. The minute I saw it, it started to come into my reality. The fact that I even desired it is proof that it's mine. You got to get happy about that because that's the truth. Amen, amen, amen.